Welcome to an example of the mathematical proof method of proof by contradiction. The form of the proof of if p then q by contradiction is to assume not p, explain, 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 therefore q is definitely false, indicating p must be true. Proof by contradiction takes the form of if not p then q, where again q is false, and therefore p must be true. And now let's prove there are infinitely many primes using the method of proof by contradiction. To begin the proof, suppose this were not the case because we are using proof by contradiction, that is, suppose there are only finitely many primes, then there must be a last largest prime, call it p. And now we'll consider the number n equals p factorial plus one. Again, at first, it's not gonna be clear why we're letting n equal p factorial plus one, but hopefully by the end, it will be. If n is equal to p factorial plus one, n is equal to the product of p, p minus one, p minus two, all the way down to the product of three, two, and one, and then plus one. So n is certainly larger than p. If we look at the expansion of p factorial, notice p times p minus one is going to be larger than p, and therefore n will be larger than p. Also, n is not divisible by any number less than or equal to p, since every number less than or equal to p divides p factorial. So if every number less than or equal to p divides p factorial, it's not going to divide p factorial plus one, meaning it won't divide n. Thus the prime factorization of n contains prime numbers, all greater than p, possibly just n itself. So p is not the largest prime, which is a contradiction. Therefore, there are infinitely many primes, and the proof is complete. Again, this proof is an example of proof by contradiction, one of the standard styles of mathematical proof. First and foremost, the proof is an argument. It contains a sequence of statements, the last being the conclusion, which follows from the previous statements. The argument is valid, so the conclusion must be true if the premises are true. And now let's go back and take a look at this proof in detail, step by step. Notice the proof is on the left. Step one, we suppose there are only finitely many primes. This is a premise. Note the use of suppose. Step two, there must be a larger prime, call it p. This follows from step one by the definition of finitely many primes. Step three, and this is key, we let n equal p factorial plus one, basically just notation, although this is the inspired part of the proof, looking at p factorial plus one is the key insight of the proof. Step four, n is larger than p by definition of p factorial. Five, n is not divisible by any number less than or equal to p. This is by definition, p factorial is divisible by each number less than or equal to p, so p factorial plus one is not. Step six, the prime factorization of n contains prime numbers greater than p. Since n is divisible by each prime number in the prime factorization of n, n by step five. Step seven, therefore p is not the largest prime by step six, n is divisible by a prime larger than p. Step eight, this is a contradiction from step two and step seven, the largest prime is p and there is a prime larger than p. And finally, step nine, therefore, there are infinitely many primes. From step one and step eight, our only premise led to a contradiction, so the premise is false. I hope you found this helpful.